Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're looking at a macroeconomics question from 2022. This is set two, question number two. In order to answer this question, you should be through unit five. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your macroeconomics and microeconomics exam. Let's get into it. Now this question is all about the macroeconomic data for country A. The first thing we have to do is calculate the real GDP and real GDP per capita. And both of those are going to be for the 2021 data on this table. In order to find real GDP, you're going to take the nominal GDP divided by the GDP deflator times 100. So for part AI, we're going to take the $88,000 of nominal GDP divided by the GDP deflator for 2021 times 100, and that equals $44,000. The formula for per capita GDP is the real GDP divided by the population. So we're going to take that $44,000 and divide it by the 110 people that live in this country. That equals $400 worth of per capita GDP. For part B, we need to explain if the standard of living in country A has increased, decreased, or stayed the same from 2020 to 2021 based on the numbers we have in this table. With the information on this table, the best way to determine standard of living is per capita real GDP. We've already calculated it for 2021, so let's calculate it in 2020 to see if it increased or decreased in 2021. So we're looking at that row on the table this time, and we have to remember that nominal and real are the same thing in the base year. So per capita real GDP is the $40,000 of real GDP divided by the 100 people that lived there in 2020. That once again equals $400 of per capita real GDP. So that tells us that the standard of living stayed the same because per capita real GDP was $400 for both 2020 and 2021. And if you explain the answer, something like that, you got yourself a point. For part C, we have to explain how an increase in government spending on education would affect economic growth in country A. In order to answer this question, we need to remember that growth is a function of the quality and quantity of resources within a country. Increases in the quality or quantity of resources is going to increase growth and government spending on education increases the human capital of the workforce. Human capital is the skills and knowledge of the workforce, and that leads us to our answer of increase, because more education would increase human capital and worker productivity. That increases long-run potential real output, shifting the long-run aggregate supply curve to the right. And if you haven't answered something like that, you get yourself a point. For part D, we have to assume that country A produces consumer goods and capital goods. And we're going to draw a production possibilities curve for this country and show the impact of government spending on education on the graph. So for our first point for this graph, we're going to label our axes, consumer goods and capital goods. And we're going to draw in a concave production possibilities curve. And that's your first point on the graph. In order to get the second point, you're going to show the economic growth as a shift outward of both sides of this curve. And if you got that, you got your next point. And there you have it. Those are the answers for Macroeconomics 2022's set two, question number two. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.